Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, The Worries and Stress They Dump on You. The Worries and Stress They Dump on You. Whoever they might be, that is up to you to think about, pray about. But at the end of the day, we don't want other people's worries and stress, okay? We don't want folks' nervousness and uneasiness, right? So sometimes we will avoid conversations. We'll look the other way. Sometimes we're not very nice, respectful, because we've got our share of issues. I know that some folks don't want to be their brother's keeper, but I do know that there are those believers who are called, who are chosen, and who can handle their brothers and their sisters who are going through their share of crisis. But I also understand that there are those individuals who are ill-equipped to handle those who have much worry and stress. And so therefore, these individuals should never, and I do mean never, it is a strong word, but they should not be involved with people on a level where there's emotion, counsel, advice, service, where it requires having to sit down and listen for long periods of time. These people are the ones who we know they're not gifted in that sort of area of service, counseling, doing for others and all of that, being kind and righteous and patient. No. They've got scowls on their faces. They have attitudes. They have their share of mumbling under their breath, deep sighs, eye rolls, gossiping, being mean-spirited, being short with you. It doesn't matter what ethnicity, culture, they just don't have a gift for dealing with people who are filled with their share of worry and stress. Now, those believers who are guilty as charged for being mean-spirited toward others, you go to the Lord, you confess your sin, and you repent, and you ask the Lord to deal with your heart. Lord knows I've had to do that myself, because some people can rub you the wrong way. The worries and stresses of the day is enough, isn't it? The worries and stresses of the day that other people have that they want to put upon you is where our focus is today. Worry. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That is in Psalm 37. We're actually... 27 and 1. So we have the psalmist who is encouraging himself. He's asking himself a question. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Sometimes we fear man, we fear woman, we fear what's going to happen around the corner. We fear what is ahead. We're concerned. We are upset. We are having our share of sleepless nights. And the Lord will speak to us and tell us, no, that is not what you need to be doing at this time. What you need to be doing is leaning on me, trusting in me. I remember the Lord encouraged me simply by saying to me one day, watch what I do. You see, because I went to him burdened with some foolishness that some women I had picked up in the atmosphere was saying about me. And I knew that there was a strategic role that the woman who was bringing about the confusion was after. And what it was, was she wanted to be in a leadership role. So some people will come up with their share of issues, even when they're really not issues, because they're worried and they're fearful and they're stressed about whatever you say or whatever you do. Um, They are 
on their way towards something and if they think that you're going to create some type of problem for them an obstacle um, then they will do their share of dirt but let me tell you that was not what I was after was to knock somebody off their trail or their path I wasn't interested in being that one that was after someone's job I'm minding my own business I've seen the glory so to speak right I've been there done it had my opportunities in life and I wasn't interested in what some had assumed or thought okay and I tried in my own way to uh, just discourage that kind of thinking um, I even said some things to let them know no I'm not here for what you think I'm here for no I don't want what you got matter of fact my eyes are somewhere else I'm thinking about some other things some of you all you know what I'm talking about because you've heard the whispers and you've seen the attitudes and there were those that felt threatened by you simply with you just walking in the room okay so people have their share of worries and stresses and fears that they'll put upon other folk they'll say you're worried they'll say you're stressed they'll say you're scared of someone or something and you're like where are you getting all this from that's not me we've got those individuals who because they're concerned see that's another word they'll throw in to mask their worry their fear their stress they're concerned about any number of things you said or you did right um, they are um, really showing their true colors when they have this long list of all these so-called concerns that is a person who simply has their worries and they're trying to save face they're trying to show themselves to be strong when just the other day we just saw your weakness okay some folks feel like they've got to rebound but they rebound in a prideful way they rebound in a way that at times is illogical it makes no sense why are you being so mean today or being uh, so snarky why are you having these little negative comments you see um, these sorts of people They've got their internal issues, their worries, their stresses, their fears. And I've come across those that not only do they have those emotions going on, but they've got jealousy on top of it because they see how cool, calm, and collected you are. They see that you are mature. They see that you're not for the petty games and the silly talk they know that you have a lot going on maybe they've done research on you you see um, they've done their share of conversing with others who like you maybe even more and so they've got their worry stress and fear that that one that they won over is going to like you more do for you more um, you know things of that sort so we've got people who like to dump their worry stress and fear on others while masking what's really going on inside please do take a moment to pray for those individuals so I'm in a particular book called living the ancient Psalms messages for modern life and this particular book has a number of Psalms in it it was written by Judith Gallus and I want to read the section in this book that is titled worry the psalmist is both worried and confident okay and that was the psalm that I read earlier and just for your reference those of you all who enjoy reading the word of the Lord you're going to go over to the King James Version and it is Psalm 27 1 so the psalmist is both worried and confident perhaps he sees his enemy in the distance 
yet he feels certain that he has nothing to fear. Perhaps his enemy's strength or cleverness makes him feel momentarily vulnerable. But he remains steadfast. He's not worried because God is on his side. Can I encourage someone today? Don't be worried. Don't be stressed. Don't be fearful. I know it's easier said than done, but let's take that deep breath. And then let's exhale. And you just keep doing that until you feel a sense of calm. You don't want to be that one that shows that you don't have God. How many people have walked around talking about they got God, but then we listen to their conversation and the way they behaved and we said, if you got God, why are you acting like that? Are you a believer? Yes, I'm a believer. Are you a child of God? Yes. Well, why are you so worried, so stressed? I mean, really, it's not that serious, you see. And so they, sometimes they get mad at themselves and they also get mad at others. But you were the one that was freaking out that day. You were the one that was upset, you see. And now you want to get on your totem pole. You want to get prideful because now you're no longer worried. You're no longer stressed. And it's back to being that uh, judgmental or self-righteous type of individual. You see, I've got to use the example of the narcissist. Who is that one who loves himself or herself very, very much? Tends to look at his or herself quite a bit in the mirror. Tends to be the one who's very judgmental and critical of others. No matter what you say or do, the narcissist never sees his or her weakness, never ponders, never confesses that he or she is in the wrong. Okay? And so when you saw the narcissist that day who was weak, stressed out, talking quite a bit, that individual didn't like the fact that you saw that side. So the next day or weeks after, they've got to cover up that day when they lost it. That day when you looked at them in a different way. Wait a minute, I've got to show that I am not that person. And so if we bring the topic up of how you fell off, you were not as strong that day, you were worried, you were fearful. Oh, no, 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 that's not what you saw. No, 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 that's not what you heard. See, that's the kind of games that the self-centered, self-righteous egoist likes to play. It's never what you claim it to be, what you observe with your own eyes, even what the video showed, okay? But you see, I stick with the truth and I don't waver from the truth and I'm not worried or stressed or fearful when it comes to pointing out some things with our narcissistic type of family members and friends. And that's why for some of them, they don't bother with you because they know you're not going to hold your peace on some things. OK, there are times where, yes, God will release you to speak and other times where he will tell you stand down and be quiet you see, because when God says, watch what I do, you best believe something is about to go down. So in the book that I'm reading out of uh, Living the Ancient Psalms by Judith Gallus, in the second paragraph, she says, I'm grateful that when I reach out to you, I can feel your warmth and strength. Now you as being God. Once again, I'm grateful that when I reach out to you, I can feel your warmth and strength seep into my spirit and subdue my worries, no matter how small or random. See, that's how the child of God talks. With you, I'm not a nameless nobody. Rather, I'm a troubled child seeking comfort and as my parents. You do not fail me. When anxieties and fears darken my thoughts, you are my light. When I feel doomed to failure or find myself too fearful to embrace a challenge, you are my salvation. I've learned that as a child of God, I can bring my apprehensions to you and you will exchange them for a blessed assurance that you stand near me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. God is standing near you. God wants you to turn over your anxieties and fears. He wants you to look at him 
as your light, like that flashlight, right? That shines in the darkness. God says, I'm here. You see, I like when she says, when I feel doomed to failure or find myself too fearful to embrace a challenge, right? You are my salvation. I've learned that as a child of God, I can bring my apprehensions to you and you will exchange them for a blessed assurance that you stand near me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. With its light and salvation, this verse is seen as having a strong connection to the Jewish day of atonement. Somebody needs to be changed today. How long are you going to keep making excuses for your anxieties, your fears, your worries? How long are you going to keep making excuses for someone else's anxieties, fears, and worries? We get some husbands that do that sort of thing concerning their wives. We've got some wives that do that sort of thing concerning their husbands. Well, excuse my husband, says the wife. He tends to get a bit nervous, a, a bit worried, a, a bit fearful of some things. Um, Excuse my dear wife. She tends to be a bit anxious and she has her share of troubles as a result of her issues dealing with this group and that one you see making the excuses I don't want somebody making excuses for me what I want somebody to do is to pray for me what I want somebody to do is to give me something to calm my nerves <laughs> come on now and I'm not talking about something illegal or something that goes against what the one true God wants for our lives so for some of you all drinking is not the 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 answer and um, drugs is not the answer, but for you, what you need to do is get in that space, that quiet space, stop moving, stop talking on the phone, stop looking at the computer, the tablet, the cell phone, you know, the television and get in that quiet space and allow the Lord to rejuvenate your mind, your body and your spirit. Talk to the Lord about the worries, the fears, and the stresses. Do you know that sometimes, you know, I go through my issues and I, I go to the Lord and I'm like, you know, I'm, I don't know why I feel this way. I get upset with myself, right? And some of you all, sometimes you got to get upset with yourself and quit giving yourself the pass, being like that husband or wife or somebody making excuses for your issues, okay? Some folks, they tell others, you know what? I understand you going to the church. I understand you reading your word, but you need something a little bit stronger than just what you're doing now because it's not working um, to the extent that it should, you see. That healing has got to be not just somebody praying for you, but you willing to change your mindset, change your behaviors. Um, when issues arise, telling yourself, no, we're not going to go there today. No, I'm going to redirect my thoughts. I'm going to think about something positive. I'm going to think about the goodness and the mercy that shall follow me all the days of my life, Lord Jesus. I'm going to get around those positive people as opposed to the negative people. You see, the negative people will discourage you. The negative people will have you thinking all sorts of stuff. The people who are positive will encourage you and tell you, you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. It's not that serious. And then, you know what? What happens is it really isn't that serious. How many times have we been, you know, so caught up, so stressed out? And then we get there and we go, why was I spending all that time concerned about this matter? Uneasy, worried, nervous. And then for some people, I understand, you know, you're rightfully angered. You're rightfully upset and worried, you know, especially when it comes to court cases, right? And going to visit somebody in jail and, you know, you just see some things that are just bigger and and it seems and, and bigger than what you can handle and so it tends to upset you a bit right but once again we've got to take control over our emotions as best as we can even if your hand is shaking even if your legs are wobbly you know even if people tell you you know that oh well you know uh, this is a challenge what you're about to embark on and most people mess up and you know I don't think you've got enough knowledge on, in this area and I don't think you should tackle it 
Well, you know, get enough information, practice enough times, get around the people who can be able to give you the information that will empower you, that will strengthen you, that will uh, calm your nerves down a bit. You see, sometimes, sometimes the anxiety and the worry is there because we're not knowledgeable enough because nobody has said anything to help us through. You see, when you got people who are dumping their fears, their worries, and they're not dumping any type of encouragement or positivity or what have you, then yes, that's going to raise your anxiety levels. If you got the mother who's sitting up there telling you about everything that could go wrong, yes, your anxiety level is going to go up. When you got uh, a friend who likes to stay at home all the time and always talking about what's going on out there and how big bad and dark the the world is guess what you gonna start to be just like that so-called friend but I would say that's not much of a friend if you're not encouraging me to live my life come on that's not much of a of a, a good counselor and a relative if all they're gonna do is tell me you need to stay home and you you don't need to be going out there and ooh, I mean that's scary and I wouldn't do it and all that I mean I heard all of these things you see. And so then as I was maturing and growing into, you know, an adult, somebody's fearful and worried about me even becoming the adult, me standing up for myself, me uh, moving to this area and that city, me taking on new jobs, me uh, (laughs) bringing my children into the world. There was always somebody worried for me. But I want you to know that I don't want somebody worried worried for me, fearful for me, concerned about me. What I need is a prayer warrior. Hello. What I need is somebody that's not going to be that one that's saying, ooh, you better watch what you say. Ooh, you might end up being the next one that's in the grave or something. Girl, You, be- I don't need that in my life. I shut those people off. I block those people. I ain't got time for them type of people, you know. Because, see, there are plenty of people that say all sorts of things, and they still got breath in their body, and I mean, it's pretty bad, you see. But if I'm all caught up in every little thing that somebody says or somebody does, I would never have a platform. I'd be off in some corner somewhere, okay, prying my eyes out, wishing to be dead or something, you see. But God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Somebody come on up out of that fear and that worry and that stress, God. God got you. Somebody needed to encourage you this day. Whatever you're faced with, God knows what it is. He was there before you got there, okay? (laughs) Before you got wind of the news, before you heard through the grapevine. All I say is that you go over to the one true God and allow him to direct your path. Allow him to give you the knowledge, the information. Um, Move on your spirit to go where you need to go you know, to get the peace of mind. Like I said, I mean, knowledge, some of you all, you know, knowledge is power. The more knowledge you got about a situation, depending on what it might be, you might feel more at peace. Now, some people, the more knowledge they get, the more anxious they get. And that's where I say, you don't need to be doing all that watching and reading anymore. You need to sit down, relax, Put your mind on some other things. (laughs) Exercise. Wear your little body out. But do whatever it takes to get that worry, that fear, that anxiety off your back. When it comes to relationships, right? Worried about what that man is doing. You better stop that. Because nine times out of ten, if you feel like that, there's probably something breaking down in your relationship. And then I would have to ask, did God even call you to a relationship like that? Because the God I serve, he don't call us to relationships where we're worried about where a man's at, what he's doing, what he's up to. Okay? Or men who are worried about women and what she doing and where she going. Uh, My God, he don't call us to relationships like that. And sometimes all of that is nothing but something going on inside of you from way back in the day. Somebody told a lie. Somebody was disrespectful. Now you're taking all your worries and fears and your anxieties and you're dumping it on people who... Look, I didn't know you back then. I wasn't the one who cheated on you. You see what I mean? I wasn't the one that lied on you, says that female or says that male. So you need to stop with all of this. I I have done nothing to make you feel this way. That's in your mind. That's that girlfriend you be talking to. That's your mama, you know, or that's your daddy or that's your brother. You need to stop. 
you see and a lot of relationships come to an end because somebody once again is dumping their worries their fears and anxieties on someone else people do this at the workplace worries fears and anxieties of what the boss might say what the co-worker might do okay they take all these worries and fears and then they're dumping them on other people and saying this is what's going on and i wish you would do something about it and the people are like it's not that serious no i think she's up to something i think she's after my job or i think she look is it valid you need to check check yourself before you wreck yourself is it really valid is there enough information there to say that that person is up to no good or maybe it's you that's really up to no good and you feel guilty because once again we got those individuals see we got those that they know that they got caught in the cookie jar some time back and they know that they was written up or they possibly lost their last job behind that foolishness then they go into the new job and they back to doing their dirty dirty deeds then they want to dump all of their fears and worries and stresses or they want to mask once again their nervousness by saying oh I'm good it's everybody else she's the problem really at the end of the day God he shines the light you got to be willing to see the truth for what it is especially if you're in management see the truth for what it is and know that you got some worry warts you got some people who keep up tension you got some people who don't like to encourage other people They discourage other people with their fears and somebody got to put these people in check because people like this can tear your organization down. They can um, they can block progress. They um, can um, keep folks from meeting expectations. Um, They have their own so many issues going on with them that. they uh hold other people back she was doing real well until the worry ward showed up and said no i'm a concern she might do this and she might do that oh no uh -uh. i don't think she's gonna you know do well in this position oh no because she might mess this up and mess that up and you see what she did here and there i mean some people don't even get a chance at opportunities because we got knuckleheads who are so caught up in their worry and their fears and anxieties that they dump them on other folks masking uh that information and so-called suggestions advice and tips when it's really nothing more than their worries their fears and their anxieties and now somebody who was a good employee and may have wanted to progress in that organization won't because the worry war kept carrying information back saying that this one is no good and that one's not going to be able to do this and this one don't have enough knowledge and i doubt whether or not this one can do the job and all that Stop listening to those worry warts when they give you long lists of things and it's not matching up and it's not making sense and it's not that big of a deal. You got yourself a worry wart and they're probably so worried that you're going to end up terminating them. (laughs) Okay, or they might be worried because they're going to get in trouble again, you know, because once again, they're doing some things they're not supposed to. Once again, we got some real slick, real clever, but worry filled folk and you've got to be discerning. So I pray in Jesus name for discernment for those of you all who may have never even thought of a topic like this. Okay, may have never felt like this sort of thing was going on. But after listening to this message, now your eyes are wide open and you're going to start listening for the worry warts in your organizations and your families. And you're going to start shutting these people down. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, right? So we're supposed to use that love, that sound mind, okay, when dealing with people, places, and things. So thank you, as always, for taking time out of your busy schedule. You've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and thank you so much to those of you all who have given. Those who feel so moved to give, we do welcome giving on this channel and blessings to you.